riding along with Massimiliano Papis of Milan, Italy, Formula One driver last season for the footwork team, having his first introduction to the NASCAR high banks here at Daytona. And you can see Bob, he looks uh, quite relaxed there. Uh, it's been a long night, and I'm sure he's happy to, uh, to see the sun coming up and uh, to see the light of day. Uh, it, it really is a good feeling here. Very little steering input. Uh, coming up to the chicane. Yeah, let, let's hope he's already been through here once and he's seen all this dirt or enough cars have been through. You can see there's quite a bit of dirt down there, but he's online. It's not a big problem. Getting back to the 55 car, leading the Exxon Supreme GTS 2 category. That car was entered as number 59. This official politely informed the team that the 59 number has been retired in honor of the man who took it to five IMSA championships, Peter Gregg. Well, you can see the uh, number 30 car through the uh, through the trioval here, down into turn one, and this is really a very hard braking zone into turn one. You can see the uh, the flames uh, out of the back of the car on the overrun there. You just like to see a shot like this where you can really have a good look at the driver. You can see how relaxed he is. You can see quite a bit of kickback in that steering wheel. That's a very small steering wheel. Uh, you can see you know less than a half a turn there, and that's a very tight tight corner there. Turn three. The colleague David Hopps said the problem with onboard cameras is that you watch the drivers at work and people who may not be familiar with race car driving seem to think that it's just like driving down to the corner grocery store only faster but it's not that at all despite how relaxed Max Pappy's looks. Yeah let's not forget you know he's uh, he's probably driven six or eight hours already uh, you know he looks quite relaxed but I'm sure he's feeling quite tired it's been a long evening. That's how far the race leaders have gone to this point. 516 laps, 1,837 miles. Back live at Daytona International Speedway, there is Max Papis of Italy in the Ferrari 333 SP that sat on pole for the 34th edition of the Rolex 24 at Daytona. That was about 23 hours and 40 minutes ago. Right now, that car is on the same lap as the overall race leader, We'll try to pick up the leader, give you an idea of how far behind Wayne Taylor is. There he comes, off of the NASCAR Oval. Only twice before in the 33 previous runnings of this race have the top two cars in the overall standings been on the same lap at the end of the race. There you see the gap. One minute, 42 seconds from first to second place. 126 is the all-time closest margin of victory. John Andretti, Derek Bell, and Bob Wallach in a Porsche beating Bryce Cobb, excuse me, beating, um, yes, Bryce Cobb, John Nielsen, Andy Wallace, and Jan Lammers. Sorry, right, before going to break, I thought it was Mario Andretti, but it was John Andretti that was in that car. That margin of victory, 1 minute 26 seconds and change. So we've got a couple of issues here. One is the fuel issue for both cars. Mark Scott just telling us he's not sure. Kevin Doran doesn't seem to want to talk about it got fuel issues with both cars and uh, also Wayne Taylor's not feeling well we know that I'm sure adrenaline will carry him through for the last uh, the last few minutes of this race back in 1903 Ransom Olds who founded the Oldsmobile company set a world land speed record of 54 miles an hour on the sands of Daytona Beach just a few miles from where we sit today on that last lap, Max Pappy's chopped two more seconds off the lead, enjoyed by the Oldsmobile that would have made Ransom Olds proud. They lead this race in their debut with the double overhead cam Aurora V8 in the World Sports Car Class. And it would be a weekend of firsts if that Olds can hold on. It would be a great victory for Pirelli Tires. Their first effort on a North American designed and built car in a major North American racing series. As you can see, very few people in the grandstands. That's the way it is here at the Rolex 24. Everybody is down on the infield. More than 40,000 people gathered despite cold temperatures, misting rain, and breezy weather when we started this race. In the nighttime, the wind chill temperatures got incredibly low. And even today, when the sun came out, it has hardly warmed the temperature. Now the difference, one minute, 37 seconds from first to second. Tell you what, Max Pappies may be doing more for his reputation as a racing driver right here and right now than he has in a season or a half season of Formula One racing in the footwork. You know, one interesting aspect of this is, you know, inside the last hour of the race, less than 30 minutes to go, 
And if you're if you're driving around in some of these slower cars, you've been racing for well over 23 hours now. Generally, the last half hour of this race, the positions are pretty well set. You, you don't expect a guy like Max Pepe to be, you know, practically setting lap records every lap. You don't expect someone to be running at that pace. Everyone's tired, and I wouldn't be surprised if he runs into a problem here in terms of lapping traffic coming up on guys very quickly. People just aren't expecting it at this point in the race. Interesting. I wonder how many drivers in this race know that the leaders are so close together and this race is so closely contested. Well, they know the positions. One of the things that you do when you drive here is you can drive by and look up at the pylon. That's one of the most exciting things about moving up is you drive by and watch your position climb the pylon. So they certainly know who is the first and second place car. 687 laps complete, and the Ferrari is on the pit entrance lane. You're going to see some speed on the pit lane now. He's got to be going 150 or 60 miles an hour. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anyone come that pit lane at that speed. That was remarkable. Now the team goes to work. Marty Reed, uh, excuse me, Bill Weber is there. Well, the fuel hose is in. They're going to put on four new tires. Max Pepe sits there. Every time they needed a break, they didn't get one. Everyone watches as this car pulled, and he came screaming down pit road. He had one whole thing go against him. They have a car sitting right in front of the pit in front of him. A blistering fast change, and there they go. And now it's a race to the finish, guys. Wow. Well, while they were in the pits, the number four Oldsmobile came by. Max Pepe is back to a lap down. He'll have to do it all over again. As Papis was coming down into the pit lane, he got on the radio and said, give me new tires if you want to win. He wanted new tires. Let's see what he can do. Boy, looking back over this race, the missing tools and parts in the pit lane when they needed to work on the car. The yellow flag in which Max Papis found himself in the wrong group at the wrong time when he needed to close up on Wayne Taylor under yellow. So many things go into winning this race, and so many things can keep him from winning it. The seconds ticking away. A great finish still in store. Stay with us for more live from Daytona. Seconds away. There is Max Papis in the Ferrari. As great a race as Ferrari has ever run, in my view. A spectacular performance for Max Papis. They may not win, but they have given it everything. And I can hardly wait for the 12 hours of Sebring in March. Looking out of the booth there, it appears as though they're getting ready for the white flag. So we're getting close here to the white flag lap. The IMSA flag man waves as Wayne Taylor flashes across the start-finish line. And have a heart for Wayne Taylor. He has worked for years to get to this point. Developing all of his own racing programs. Got together with Dan Doyle at Danka Industries. And now Wayne Taylor finds himself behind slower traffic. That could have been a disaster. Yeah, and those are those moments when you're a little bit tentative. You know, you want to pick the wrong move. And, of course, he waits. Should I go? Should I not go? But I think everything's probably going to look like he's fine for Wayne here. 30 seconds remaining. 23 hours and 30 seconds into this Rolex 24. Wayne Taylor, who came from South Africa, traveled to Europe, then to America, where he has made his name in IMSA racing, winner of the first ever Exxon World Sports Car Driving Championship in 1994. He has worked so hard to get here, and now it seems to be all coming true. And how about these guys, who have worked tirelessly for days and days to get this car in the race, to make it one of the fastest on the racetrack, and even more importantly, to make it reliable. This engine has never gone 24 hours before. It is about to, right now. And a very impressive uh, debut for the Riley and Scott team, the, the factory back uh, Oldsmobile team, Mark Scott, his whole crew. This is their first race together as a group, and uh, just very impressive events for them. Did it say Mad Max there on Scott Sharp's cap? That would be too ironic, because Mad Max Pappies is trying to claw his way up to where Wayne Taylor prepares for the checkered flag. The Ferrari team out in the pit to welcome their man home. That special relationship between mechanics and drivers. They work to prepare the car. The driver takes it, tries to do something with it, and Max Pappies has done that. But this is Wayne Taylor's moment.
down here with a very happy Mark Scott. Congratulations, boy. What a nail biter. Oh, man, I tell you, that was the longest 24 hours I've ever had. That was just fantastic. It was a wonderful fight. Just thanks to Dan Doyle and Danko and Pirelli and Oldsmobile for a wonderful engine. And boy, did Scott and Jim Wayne ever do a hell of a job, didn't they? Thanks, guys. That was great. What about at the end there? We were talking about the fuel pump situation. Were you in trouble? Well, well, yes, we were, I suppose. We, uh, we had a fuel pump going away, and uh, uh, we were trying to uh, save it through to the last. I tell you what, he wants to talk to uh, his driver. He's talking to him on the radio. We'll talk to Wayne in Victory Lane. Bill? With Didier Taze, the man that sat on the pole here, I know it's hard to accept this when you finish second, but a great, great day for your team. It was a great race. It was a great race, yes. We, we make up six laps in two hours, and uh, we're missing, I think we're missing 15 minutes or 20 minutes in the race. A historical <laughs> moment here at Daytona. Close finish, you guys coming back. How does it feel to you? You've had a long, successful well, I, You know, it's a great feeling because it was a great race, and it was like, it's not something where, you know, you have like 10 laps between cars. Here it's like uh, 40 seconds, and uh, it, it shows, you know, it's a competition is there, and uh, it's, a, it's a good championship, and, um, well, that's racing, you know. Yeah, you're able to smile even though you finished second because it was such a great day overall. Yes, it was great. Thank you. Well, congratulations to you and all your drivers and your crew. Thank you very much. It's Didier Taze, guys. Well, perhaps Didier Te said it all. That's racing. This was a classic. And Max Pappies right there helped make it so. Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway. There you see the second place car and mobbed by its 40 mechanics and some of the fans who have made their way down. Standing by with the man who drove this car as hard as it could be driven in the closing moments of this race. Here's Bill Weber. Well, uh, fortunately, Max is on the phone because uh, I'm out of breath, but uh, he's talking to the chairman of the board of Ferrari and uh, explaining, I guess, you know, how he's able to do what he does, which has amazed all of us for, uh, for many, many, many laps. As you can see, he's all smiles and has been since we caught up to him. He's been, been very popular. And, okay. And now we'd like to introduce everybody to Max Papis. Papis. Okay, you can correct me. You can, you can correct me all you want. Thanks for those thrills. Yeah, you know, thanks to you all. You know, it has been fantastic. I really, really worked very hard, and all the crew worked very hard. You know, Ferrari and the team home have done a fantastic job, and uh, you know, we couldn't do more. You know, sometimes you race, you have luck, sometimes you haven't. You know, it was just a question. You know, this time, you know, maybe next time we'll be. Here. Can you share what it was like in that last 45 minutes chasing down the four car? Yeah, it was a fantastic thrilling. You couldn't do faster than that, you know. I, I was really 100%, like, all the lap, like, qualifying. Like, uh, like if I was, uh, you know, like, like if I was really unqualified. And, you know, I was, I'm very proud because, you know, the car lasted so long. And, you know, we could do fantastic time, like, in qualifying, even in the last lap. So, you know, thanks to Ferrari to be back here in Daytona, and thanks to my team as well. Yeah, that, that probably doesn't hurt your career at all. Like, that'll look good on your resume, don't you think? Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of that. Being here in Daytona, my first time in IMSA, my first time in the United States, my first time in a novel, my first time in a 24-hour. And for me, it's, I'm very proud of all the things that they, they gave me. Well, a great day for Ferrari and the closest finish, I believe, ever in the Rolex 24, and you're part of it. Yeah, congratulations as well to the winner. They've done a good job, and uh, but we will be back. Okay, and I'll bet he will be, and he'll be back here quickly. Now, let's go to Marty.